the shape of our universe. It's a shame that some people are trying to find the shape of our infinitely wide universe, while others are still debating and wondering if Earth is flat. However, as strange as it might sound, the universe might be flat. But does flat mean a two-dimensional surface? Because if so, how can a sphere exist in such a configuration? Let's delve into the different proposed shapes of the universe and hope we can reach a satisfactory conclusion. First of all, what determines the shape of the universe? Well, Einstein's theory of general relativity proposes that mass curves the spatial and temporal dimensions, and maybe other unperceivable dimensions. In other words, mass modifies the surrounding. Thus, every massive object, i.e. possessing mass, changes its surroundings in some way. So we assume that the shape of the universe will be specified by this curvature of space-time. Accordingly, if we take the distribution of mass over the volume of the entire universe, we get the density of the universe, which ultimately gives us the shape. The Flat Universe It is denoted the term flat not because it's a two-dimensional plane, but because it has no curvature. It's impossible to imagine a three-dimensional curvature, let alone a four-dimensional one, three spatial and one temporal. Now, in order to understand the flat universe, let's take a flat two-dimensional plane and then generalize this concept. In such a case, two parallel lines will always remain parallel and the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So in a flat universe, standard Euclidean geometry applies. We also know that the universe is expanding and if we truly live in a flat universe, there exists exactly enough mass to cause the rate of expansion to slow down until it eventually stops as time approaches infinity. Thus, the universe will forever expand, but as it expands more and more, its rate will decrease. The Open Universe This universe has a negative curvature, which means it's hyperbolic in shape or saddle-like to better imagine it. Same as before, take a two-dimensional hyperbolic plane and then generalize. Two initially parallel lines will exponentially diverge away from each other and the sum of angles in a triangle will always be less than 180 degrees. Here there is not enough mass to stop the expansion, so the universe will forever expand, as in the previous case, and on top of that, it will forever remain unbounded. The Closed Universe This universe has a positive curvature, which means it has a closed shape such as a sphere. Two initially parallel lines will slightly diverge, but then eventually cross, and the sum of angles in a triangle will always be greater than 180 degrees. There exists more than enough mass to cause the expansion to stop, which means that after the universe stops expanding, it'll reverse in direction and contract in on itself, expands inwards. Hence, it's a finite and bounded universe. A little side note, while the universe probably possesses one of these shapes in the figure above, it still doesn't look like any of these. For if it's closed like a sphere, it wouldn't be the three-dimensional sphere we're familiar with, but rather a higher dimensional sphere. I know not getting an imaginable model is a bit frustrating, yet we can't comprehend more than the normal shape of the three-dimensional space we're used to. It's the brilliance of the researchers who assumed a curvature in higher dimensions that opened such discussions, and the ability to test such abstract models is even more staggering the most accepted model. So which one is it? Before answering this question, the notion of density parameter should be introduced. If you divide the average density of the universe by the mass needed for the universe to exactly stop expanding, critical energy density, you get the density parameter. Researchers found the density parameter by actually computing all the mass and energy constituents in the universe normal and dark matter, massless and near-massless particles, and dark energy, then taking the average density and finally dividing by the critical energy density. Another method researchers used is determining the length of an extremely far gas cloud and the distance from Earth to that cloud, which gives us two sides of a triangle and allows us to measure the angles. In the first method, the density parameter was found to be one, with an extremely low margin of error meaning that there is enough mass to cause the universe to stop expanding, hence a flat universe. In the second method, the angles added up to 180 degrees, with a higher margin of error compared to the previous case, which also tells us that this is a flat universe. In conclusion, it may seem that we do actually live in a flat universe, but one key concept is still left, 
we're still talking about the observable universe. All the calculations performed are limited to the observable region, so if the observable universe was indeed flat, the whole universe might not be.